the help of Hashem, we are learning Sukkah Daf Tes. We are going to start on top of the Daf, on top of the Amid by the Mishnah. We're going to be speaking about the intent or what type of intent is necessary in the construction of a Sukkah, introducing the Din of a Sukkah Yishana. We already mentioned this Din yesterday. We're going to clarify something in today's Mishnah. We're going to be learning that the wood of a sukkah is prohibited for benefit all seven days of sukkahs. We're going to be having a machlokes beshamay and beshilal. Beshilal holds that one is allowed to build a sukkah on chalamoyed, meaning that we don't need for the sukkah to be there for the entirety of the seven days. Beshamay holds that a sukkah is only valid if it was available. That means it was bemitzias for all of the seven days of sukkahs. And just concluding the sugya of sukkah yishana, which really has to do that Basilal holds you don't need to build a sukkah l'shem mitzvah sukkah, that Basilal will agree that by tzitzis you do have to make the tzitzis, we'll see starting at what step l'shem mitzvah tzitzis, if there was a lack of that intent, the tzitzis is invalid, and we're going to f- find out why is it that that level of asiyah l'shma is needed by tzitzis and not needed by the making of a sukkah. We're going to have during the sukkah a very interesting toysvis on the Avtesa Medalef, which is quoted many times, which is the last toysvis on, um, on Tes Medalef. Mitzvah haba'a ba'aveda, l'shitas toysvis, is only a problem that's midir abanan. And as we will see how that's important to better understand our sugya. Now on Daf Tes Amid Beis, we're going to learn another Mishnah that's going to be speaking about two scenarios. Number one is what will be the din of a sukkah that was built under a tree. Concept will be that we know that there are three dinim concerning the schach. Three negative dinim. Or three dinim. It has to be something that grows from the ground. But it may n- now not be connected to the ground. And it also has to be something that's currently not yet a proper keli, which means it's not susceptible to be mekabal tummy. Branches that are connected to the tree are connected, so they are not kosher schach. Any schach underneath it is, so to say, non-existent, because it's not needed, and therefore, There's going to be an issue of building a sukkah under a tree, but it goes beyond what we think. The Mishnah is going to bring another din, which will further clarify that, and that is is that if one builds a sukkah under a sukkah, the Mishnah says the bottom sukkah is not valid. Let me just explain what that means. If you have the top sukkah's floor is kosher schach, it's not that there's a proper flooring, and underneath the floor you built another sukkah. The floor is a halachically kosher schach. The schach on top is also kosher schach. So if someone is in the bottom, you would think, what's wrong with being in the sukkah that's tachas ha-sukkah? So what that there are two layers of schach? They're both kosher schach. Yet the Mishnah is going to tell us that only the top sukkah is okay, the bottom sukkah is not okay. We're going to understand the source for that, the reason for that. And having said that, the Rabbi Yirmi on Daf Tesamut Beis is going to give four scenarios where there's one sukkah, either sukkah al gabis sukkah, sometimes it's called sukkah tachas sukkah, it's the same thing. And all, there can be all four outcomes where both are valid, both are not valid, only the top one is valid, only the bottom one is valid, and the Gemara is going to speak out and explain each case of the Rabbi and obviously it doesn't contradict the Mishnah. The Mishnah is only focusing on that case where the top one is kosher and the bottom one will be not kosher or psula invalid. Chavra, let's start on top of the Amid with the Mishnah. Okay, the case of the Mishnah is called a old sukkah. An old sukkah, right away Rashi. A sukkah that was built 30 days or more prior to sukkahs. Now I have to make a very important clarification and correction to something that I said wrongfully yesterday. I was speaking about many people in their homes that they have a retractable roof. What we're saying now is even in Shulchan Aruch, the way we teach the Mishnah, there's a machlekes in the Shainim. The Mishnah is bechlal not focusing on the walls. Sukkah Yishana means when was the schach laid? So if you have a proper home and you laid the schach within 30 days, that's avad the good. Sukkah Yishana means that since the schach was placed like Rashi writes, koidim lachag shloishim or more, 30 days or more prior to the chag, 
And therefore the presumption will be that it was not put there l'shei mitzvah sukkah. And to repeat something that we, that we learned yesterday, good. Yet, even according to Basilo, that you don't need to place it l'shei mitzvah sukkah, it needed to be placed to create shade and to create shelter. Shelter and shade go together. What's for sure not good, not even according to Basilo, if this whole structure that was built, not only was it not built a shame mitzvah sukkah, it wasn't built a shame schach. You, you, you needed a private environment. Punkt, it happened to me that what you built has a shtickle covering. That's not going to be good. The question is, that's mamish what we're talking about. If you leave the bamboo the whole year. So the bamboo, was placed, even if the bamboo was not placed l'shem uh, mitzvah sukkah, as long as the roof, the schach, was placed to create shelter and shade, that's the question, is it a valid sukkah or not? Mach loikas. Beshamay hold paisel. Beshamay holds that the din of l'shma, asiya l'shma, l'shma means l'shem mitzvah sukkah is needed. The Mishnah is going to say in two lines that even according to Beshamay, if you placed it, like you said, Semach, it's 364 days, or you know, in Shnas Alavana, 353 days before Sukkot. But if you place it L'shem Mitzvah, Sukkot's good. You know, it's this man is not really the Ikid. It's about that there's a presumption that if you build something, Shloy Shem or before, before, prior, you're not having in mind the Mitzvah yet. Beshamay Poislin, you need Mitzvah, L'shem Mitzvah, Sukkot, Beisilol Armachshirim, you don't need for the schach to be laid l'shei mitzvah sukkah, but again, it has to be. You, it has to be. It has to have been put there for shelter and shade. And before we go on, something that people are familiar with, quickly the top toisvus. Quickly, toisvus quotes a Yerushalmi. We paskin like Basilo. Yeah, zok the Yerushalmi tzarech lechadish ba davar. Even though Yitaka don't need to place it l'shei mitzvah sukkah, but if it was not placed for the mitzvah sukkah, it's lechatchila better that you should do something to it. And he gives the two options. Either to take a tefach amount of schach, to lift it up and put it back. So even though you're, you're only taking out a tefach, epis, or Toysvus brings over there from Yerushalmi Rabbi Yossi that says that you should lift uh, uh, even one thin line, not even a tefach, but al kula. That's lechat chilo. And many people are familiar with this. There are other dinim that we take, mentioned quickly yesterday. Today we saka say that if a goy built a sukkah lachatchila, it's not ideal. So what people do is, is that they lift the schach and they put it back down. The concept of lachadish bodover by a yid. Or lachadish bodover l'shei mitzvahs sukkah. Back inside the Mishnah. The ezu hi sukkah yishana. Oh, kol sha'aso koidim lachag shloy shum yoim. As we said, there's a presumption that if a sukkah was built 30 days or earlier prior to sukkahs, it was not built l'shem mitzvah, aval im aso l'shem chag, then afilu mitchilas ashon akshede, even according to Beishamay. Gvalik, simple, clear Mishnah. Says the Gemara, my tamad the Beishamay, where do we find in the source that you have to build the schach? L'shem mitzvah, Omar Kroat says on Parshas Emer, chag hasukkahs shivas yomim l'shem, Right? Zok Beishamai Sukkah Ho Asuya L'shem Chag Bo'inon. In other words, it says, right? First Rashi in the Gemara. Sukkah L'shem Chag, because if Sukkah is L'shem. Just, you know, take out the words in between. However, Beisilel, yeah, Taka Shteit, Chag HaSukkah Shiva Shiamam L'shem. Ahom Eboi Leit to teach you another din. Look at the Rab Sheishas. To Amar Rab Sheishas, Mishum Rabbi Yaakivam, Minayin, from where do we know? La'atse Sukkah Sha'asurim Kol Shiva. That uh, we may not derive benefit from the materials of the Sukkah for all of the seven days. Chava, huge Machloikas Rishonim. Are we referring only to the Schach? Or does this taka mean that nothing that you built into the sukkah is allowed to be used kol shiva? Just to be aware of that. Another very important toysvah here. Whoa, we're going to learn mamish soon that there's a concept of since when bein hashmoshes of sukkahs came in. Very similar to many halachas and Shabbos. Let's say that we're speaking about the schach. The schach was designated l'shei mitzvah. So it, be, it remains muktzah-like, which is a rabbinic concept for the rest of Yom Tif. We're going to learn these words in Chazal. 
Whenever we refer to the materials of the sukkah being muksa during the seven days of sukkahs, l'chore, that means it's an isr midr And here, when we're asking for a pasik, right, how do we know that? So Toysavis right away writes <clears throat> that the, like this. I'm reading inside the middle of the third Toysavis, Minayin La'atzei Sukkah Shusurim Kol It's a very important clarification. In the middle, you know, if you see the base of the Bach at the end of that line in Toysavis, V'ya Shloimer. Tahai do'asun midoy raiso. The Chazal that we're quoting, Taka that it's asun midoy raiso. Hainu bo'oy do kayemes. What we are learning now is, is that while the Sukkah is still standing, during the seven days, Asur little mimena eitzim. And again, guys, to make it clear, it's not clear. Does eitzim mean only the schach? Many of the shaynim say that eitzim means any, not, no, no, the walls were made out of wood. Don't take a piece of wall off. That's asur midoy raiso. When we're going to learn later in Chazal that since it was iskatsoi, in the entrance of Sukkot, Bein Hashemashes, it remains designated for the rest of Yantiv. That says Toysavis is another din, that even if the Sukkah collapsed, Aval Mishin Nafla, and therefore the Batla Mitzvasa, the source that we are learning won't cover the Isr. There, there's another Isr Midr Abanan. Lo Yasira El Midr Abanan. Let's just have one Mahalach. There are many other approaches. This is very important because then people get confused. One second, it's Muktzah or there's a Pasuk. Toysavis clarifies, when the sukkah is standing, you removing atzei has sukkahs osin midoy raisa. Even if the sukkah... Is that also the schach for sure. Tzemach the schach for sure. There are many Rishonim that understand that what we are learning now means not only the schach, but anything that you built into the sukkah, let's go with Toysavis, that is the sukkah standing, you may not remove it. There's a... a new schach, if you, if you feel like you don't have enough, you want to add. So then you want to know whether that new schach, so the is this the muksa, the muksa no, we'll see soon. The isr of muksa is only if when sukkahs entered it was muksa. It's mamish like I give you an example. Remember of the buses little David Ha'asur? It's only if it was a buses, ben Ashmashis, then it remains a buses. Right, if it's a, if it's a buses of David Ha'asur, and then you add it in Shabbos of David Hamutter. Remember those dinim? Doesn't help. But if when Shabbos came in, it was a buses for both. Then, if for a moment it was only a basis of Davar Ha'asun, you can make it a basis of Davar Hamutan again. This I, I, I think the issue was with uh, people that would hang fruit as decorations in their sukkah. And then they decide they want to. Keep exactly, exactly. What Danny's mentioning is just an application of this big machloikas that we're speaking about now. Whether this chazal is only for the schach, he's giving an example. We're going to learn that in Dafyur about Noye Sukkah. Was if it goes to anything that you connected to the sukkah, is there a problem of using it? And according to some, then it's an Isur Doi Raisa. Wow. Because when it's still connected. Let's go back inside the Gemara. So again, so Rab Sheshis quotes Rabbi Akiva, Minayin la'atzei sukkah shasurim kol shiva, shiva Talmud loimer. He uses this Pasuk. What does the Pasuk say? It says, Chag ha-sukkah shiva syamim l'ashem pashit. That for all seven days, it's set aside for God. Another, another Tana, another Braisa, Vitanya. I mean, this is Rab Sheshis, but Mishum Rabbi Akiva. Here we have a Braisa. Rebbe Yehuda ben Mesedo Oimer. Kishem Shechal, Shem Shemaim ala Chagigo. Chag, Chag is like Meramist, Karben Chagigo. Like, wow, Karben, Kachem, no one is going to derive any benefit. Kach, Chal, Shem Shemaim ala Sukkah. Wow. Shenemar Chag, Hasukkah, Shivas Yomam Lashem. Ma Chag Lashem, Af Sukkah Lashem. So therefore, it's not available, Lebeisilo, for you to use it to teach you that you have to build it. La Shem L'Shem Mitzvah Sukkah. Problem is, is that this halacha, that there is a, there is an iser the iraisar for you to use atze Sukkah, if the Sukkah did not fall down. Kol Shiva Beishamay also agrees to, and this is the source. So therefore, we have to find a new source for the din of our Mishnah. For Beishamai, that you have to build the schach, not the walls, we don't care about the walls, the schach, the shei mitzvahs, sukkah, u Beishamai nami miboi leilo hachi, says the Gemara, you're right, enoch nami, elo maitamai do Beishamai, kro, ksiv kro achrino. Now we're going to Pasha Sre'e, vashtet and Pasha Sre'e, chag ha sukkah is tassel lecho, shivas yomim, oh, zokt Beishamai, sukkah ho asuya, le shei chag boinen. I just want to say, it's, it's so geschmack, the Rashi over here. Rashi says like this, take the words, Chag Hasuka is Tase. And Rashi says, 14 lines from the top of the Amid, mix the words around, be Mesadis, 
reorganize the words and now read it Sukkos Tase Lachag. Herst Chag Sukkos Tase. So just rearrange the words Sukkos Tase Lachag. That's Mamish good. Make the Sukkah L'Shem Achag L'Shem Amitz. Ubeisilo Hahumi Boyle to tell you another thing. If I care to leniency. I want you to know that you are allowed to build a sukkah during Cholomoyed. We're not, we're not talking about Melach and Cholomoyed. That's not the focus here. Focus here is, is that do we say that a sukkah is only valid if it was available for or seven days, which is Beishamai. Because even if you build a kosher sukkah during Cholomoyed, the fact that it wasn't available for the whole seven days, it's not valid at all. So Beisilal uses this Pasik to tell you that you don't need to build it for all seven days. A B, you made a sukkah during the Chag. Okay. Ube Shammai, they can't use the Pasik to tell you that as, even if you made it during the Chag, you understand? Chag a sukkah is tasa again. Sukkah is tasa, also be said. Make the sukkah during the Chag. Of course not. Anyan tevan cholamayit. Beishamai will, cannot learn it that way because he disagrees with this. Beishamai svidalu, like we know later from the Tana Rabbi Eliezer, the Amar, enois in sukkah b'choyloi shel moyit. All right. Now, says the Gemara, the presumption is that Lashitas Basilo items that are used for other mitzvahs also don't need to be made Lashem that mitzvah. That's the premise of the next kash. I mean, why would sukkah be different? So that's the rule, Bakhlal, you're making something for a mitzvah, you don't need to make it Lashem. Problem is, U Basila, Lais Lohu, Dirav Yehuda Amarav. Of course, we know Rav Yehuda Amarav or Amar Yiroyim. It's not that uh, Basilel has to agree with an Amoida, but when an Amoida made a statement and we don't find anyone that disagreed with it, we don't know of anyone that argued with it, it's going to be uh, what? And uh, Basilel, they can, they, even if there was a Machloikist Hanoi, and we normally pass in like Basilel, what do we know from Rabbi Huda Marav later? He spoke about Tzitzis. We're going to Tzitzis. And uh, he was lenient, Rav. He says like this, that if you made the tzitzis, we're speaking about the actual fringes that are hung at the corners, min hakoitzim, hakoitzim are thorn-like threads. What's shot thorn-like threads? So Rashi writes like this, that chutim, I'm reading Rashi, shenitku b'shesi. So when you have the uh, warp, the warp threads are the threads that go in the length. And sometimes they get ripped. And the weaver will fix them by making a knot and keep on going, but that knot will protrude. Now imagine if that knot that's protruding is mamish by the fringe, is at the end of the garment. Aside of other issues that you might be thinking about, the focus is one, that when you make that knot, even if the knot is so long that that fringe could be used for one of our chutim, you didn't place it there, L'Shei Mitzvah, you simply made a knot. That's the problem. It wasn't placed at the corner of the garment, L'Shei Mitzvah Sitzes, or Min HaNimen. Nimen are embroidery threads, which are, ex in other words, if you have an extra thread that remains, because you were embroidering the edges, the parameter of the garment. Here also, even if the length of the thread, I'm Perimeter. Even if the length, it's, you know, it's, there, there are many other dinam and sitzes, but since the placement of this thread on the garment was not done for the mitzvah, it was done because you were embroidering it, or umin ha girodin, girodin are pashat fringes. We have less, in our talesa is today, we have fringes to beautify the ends of the garments. Now we have the fringes on the talus gadol, it doesn't go all the way to the corner, but if you had fringes all the way to the corner, you know, they're also sometimes, sometimes they made the fringes because when you had the warp threads again, sometimes the warp threads went beyond the, the, the woof threads. So when it went beyond it, instead of you trimming it up, you make these nice uh, fringes. The point is, is that when all different types of weaving, if you have uh, chutin that are in the right place, but they were not placed there, L'Shei Mitzvah. So Ra Rav was heard saying P'sula. However, Rav was the lenient. Rav holds that Min HaSisin, Sisin are balls of weaving thread. In other words, that threads that were spun into the balls, they were spun, not L'Shei Mitzvah Sitzes. Rav holds that so fine. 
No, it's the, where, from when do you need to have L'shem Mitzvah Sitzes? From when you place it on the Beget. Guys, you know today that whenever you have, today it's Midr Abanan, we have all of the beautiful uh, Minhagim, that we have five knots, and it's very common that the final knot becomes loose. And you know, when we're boydik the tzitzes as we should, you know that when you tighten the knots, we're supposed to say L'shem Mitzvah Sitzes. Today, as when you fix the Keshet of the Tefillin, you say L'shem Kedushas Tefillin, you know, Kedusha, because, they, because there's, kiss, there's the words of Scripture written on it, Tashmishe Kedusha, Tashmishe Mitzvah. Anyways, Rav holds that the making of the threads doesn't have to be done Lushma. The placement has to be done Lushma. And then, Ki Amrita Kamei Shmuel, Rav passed away, so the Talmud Rav Yehuda went to a new teacher, Shmuel, and when he repeated to Shmuel that which Rav said, Shmuel was even more Machmer. Omar Li, this is about Rav Yehuda sharing, Shmuel told me, no, Af Menasis and Ami Psulam. It's even the spinning of the thread has to be done l'shei mitzvah sitzes. Alma, that even the tviya you need l'shma. So l'chaura hachinami and the boya sukkah asuya l'shma. And it's very strange to say that Rav and Shmuel are going to follow Beishamai. Like, is it that way? No, that's okay. That's okay. Shmuel Shlom is pointing out the obvious. It doesn't matter. Oh, it, 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 we're making the premises wrong. The Gemara just wants to show you the irony that don't think that the din of Basilil is across the board. It's not. Says the Gemara, no, 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 no. Tzitzis is unique. Shani hasam, that look kula alma. I want you to know, guys, that the step we learned this in a long a while back in the Alter Rebbe Shulchanarach, all of the steps, of, there's, there's like the combing of the wool before you spin it. Even that, guys, lechatchila should be done l'shma. You have no idea how important it is in the production of the threads. And a chanami, this is different because it says, and we're beginning quoting a pasuk of Parshas Kiseitze. It says, "Gedilim taase loch, gedilim is fringes make for you loch for you, meaning not for you, you for you for the mitzvah loch, which is an extra word, is l'shem choyvach." For the sake of your obligation. So there's a Pasik. So the Gemara counts us, hold on, you have exactly the same wordings by a sukkah. Ah, it says, Chag Hasukais Taselcha. Same thing. Why don't we interpret? Why doesn't Bisalul interpret? Nah, it's not used for that. It's needed for something more basic. Hahu, the Pasik that we have, the Pasik that we have by Sukkais is to tell you Lima'ute Gizula. Gezula, guys, refers here to any of the materials of the sukkah. We're going to learn later about karka, karka in an exilus. Forget about that. Materials. If a person stole materials of the sukkah and they're building a sukkah out of it, this pasik of chag asukah is taselacha is coming to teach you that it's not going to be a valid sukkah. Frek toisvus, why do we need to have a pasik? That's a big toisvus here. Isn't there a rule that any mitzvah, haba'a ba'aveira, is not a good mitzvah? If you stole the materials and you made a mitzvah out of it, that's the choice with the last choice with the Ahmed. And it, no, no, for sure. We know that some huh? Anything that's stolen, why don't need to be learned from uh, from the Pasuk? No, no, we're not saying that you can't steal it, Samach. We're saying that if someone used those stolen materials into the sukkah, the sukkah is not valid. And for that we need a Pasuk. And, the, and Toysvus asks, even that doesn't need a Pasuk, since you, you, you're only doing a mitzvah because of your sin, so it's a mitzvah that's coming through sin, we know our rule, a mitzvah baba veda is not a valid mitzvah. So Toysvus says, via Shleim, and I'm reading one sheet over here, the tama, the mitzvah, baba aveda, lav, the oiraisa, elamid rabbana. And we are looking to say that sukkah is unique beyond all the other mitzvahs. Here, if a person built a sukkah from materials that were stolen, it's biblically invalid. Why? Because we use the lacha. The problem is, why don't we use the same lacha by tzitzis for the same way? No, it's if we need a da'iraisa to invalidate a mitzvah baba veda, unique in a certain case. So taket says, gedilam tasel lach. How can we say lach is, it has to be done l'shem chay vach. Say the same thing. The Torah is writing the word lach to tell you that you can't steal a string and make, and make out of it tzitzis. The Gemara says, "No, I'll tell you the difference. By tzitzis, God wrote twice. Now it's not lacha, but it's another word, which means the same thing. What, where's the other word? Where's the ikar parsha tzitzis and parsha shlach? That over there, by tzitzis, it says 
Vaasu lahem. Vaasu, why lahem? Misha lahem. So from the Pasuk and Shlach, we already ruled out beyond the, the rabbinic mitzvah Baba Veda that the fringes, that the tzitzios may not be done because they So later in Pashas Ki Gedilam Tasel Loch, that's Taka Extra. That's used Loch L'Shem Choivach. By Sukkah, there's only once Chaga Sukkah is Tasel Locha. That Locha is used to tell you that a Sukkah Gezula is invalid biblically. The kids said, let's go right there. There's so much over here. Not the very good, not the begit, not the begit, but the, and, and not only do we have to place the fringes even tight in the knots, l'shem mitzvah tzitzes, but the fabrication of the making of the threads from a certain point, certainly in the last point of spinning it. Spinning is is when you spin it, then it goes into the ball. Even the combing, Rabbi, yes. Could you clarify again why are we only comparing? No, the older Rishem is speak about it. Guys, this daf is so loaded. We can the people spending yeshiva, I'm sure, a whole year. Mamish. In Brisk, they would stop here and they would they would move out next year. Let's go right in. Okay, next Mishnah. And as we spoke in the introduction, guys, this mix has two dinim. It's two separate, there are two statements in this Mishnah. Din number one. Ho'oise sukasoi tacha su'ilan. You have branches, like we said, schach has to be something that comes from the ground, but currently used as schach, it must be disconnected from the ground. If you have a tree and branches are extending or hanging based over a certain area, and underneath those branches you built a sukkah, says our Mishnah Ki'ilu Asa'a B'toi Chabais, it's as if you built it in your house and thus it's invalid. Guys, it sounds simple. Nothing is simple. Why did the Mishnah have to say that? We'll see in the Gemara a lot. Din number two, separate din. That sukkah al gabi sukkah. Sukkah gabi sukkah means you have a two story sukkah. The floor of the top one is kosher schach. Make that very clear. So, therefore, the one who's downstairs, when he looks up, he's looking up at kosher schach. And, and above it, there's vaitir kosher deschach. It's not like tach ha-su'ilan. See, tach ha-su'ilan is very good. It's a picture on the top from Kevin. There, there, as we will speak out in the Gemara, the words, the words are gavaldic. Another din says the Mishnah, only the top one is kosher, the top one is puzzle. Uh, the bottom one is puzzle. The bottom one is puzzle. Now, why would the bottom one be puzzle? Look inside. Let's, let's start at least here. Get, get Rashi. The second line in the Amid. The Shnei Sechach and Yeshla. Even though there are taka two kosher schachs, but it's two. And Vikra puzzle Sukkah Tacha Sukkah will see that there is a Pasik that's going to invalidate a double layer of schach. Now, the Gemara, we're going to learn the next daf. What does that mean? Like, wh- what happens if there's only one tefach space, or four tefachim space. What is the height between the two schachos where we apply this din that we learned from Apasik? That you can't sit under a double layer of schach. We'll see that on the afyur, a big machlekes, three-way machlekes. But the moment it's defined as a separate layer, even though they're both kosher, then the Mishnah says, the tachtoin is psula, and again, as we'll see, Rabbi Yirmiya expounds the Mishnah by saying he gives us four cases one case, the top one is good, the bottom one is bad, which is the Mishnah. One case will be Pung Fakert, the top one will be Psula, the bottom one will be Kshedah. There are going to be cases where both will be Kshedah and cases where both will be Psula. That's the case of the Mishnah, is El Yoyinu Kasher, Tachtoyin is Psula. However, on this case of the Mishnah, Rabbi Yehuda Oimer, Rabbi, and this we're going to leave for the next year, he says like this, Im ein do Yoyin bo El Yoyinu, if there are no tenants living in the upper one, then, it's not what you think. Whatever you think Rabbi Yudah is saying is nishdas, and let's leave Rabbi Yudah completely for the Gemara. Okay, let's first focus, let's first focus on the din of a sukkah under a tree. Here, here the problem is, is that the branches are not kosher schach. Comes along Rav and he has a gaval like a chiddish. Omar Rav. That loy shanu, our Mishnah. That, why, why aren't the branches, why aren't the branches? I'm sorry, the branches are, are still connected. Okay, good. 
But there's a lot, there's a lot of Baruch, ooh, there's a lot here. Amar Rav, Loishan, where did the Mishnah say that a sukkah under the ilan, under the branches, is not okay? That's only in a tree. Shetzilosoy meruba mechamosi chever held cup, where the shade that's provided by those branches create more shade greater than its sunlight. In other words, you have something that's, that's giving us the effect of schach, but its schach is possible. That's why the sukkah that's built underneath it is automatically invalidated. Avol says Rava, and this is a categorical statement. No matter when, when chamosoi miruba mitzilosoi, if the branches are so sparse, that so much sunlight goes through them to the area underneath it, that you end up with more sunlight. The sunlight is greater than the shaded area. No matter, I'll, I'll explain the no matter in a moment, in all the scenarios, if you build a kasha, the sukkah underneath it, as long as the schach underneath it has enough, is creating more shade than sun, then a kasha. Counters the Gemara doesn't make sense for you to make such a categorical statement. Me, my, frek, the Gemara logically doesn't make sense. Me, uh, oh, second, and we're the uh, Rav needs a raya. We'll, 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 I'll explain the Chiddush of Rav and Imam. What's this proof? He says, every, every din we learned until now, it's not that we learned that much, we're up to only daf tes. But whenever the Mishnah gave a case where something is not kosher, like even in this Mishnah, sukkah, gabe sukkah, what did the Mishnah say? The Mishnah said that tachtoina psula. Or we had uh, today in Daftes Amadalaf, right? If you built the schach, you put the schach, not the shame mitzvah sukkah, beishamai psula, or poislin, invalid. Why do you have to say the words that ki'ilu asa batoi chabayis? What are you adding with that? So says Rabbi Mimai, me, Diktani, since Rabbi Noah Kaddish writes ki'ilu asa batoi chabayis, lo me lulimis tinkilu asa chabayis. Right? But you always write, right? Psula. Ah. In other words, that's actually Rebbe hinting that he's limiting the invalidation. Eloh Kamash Mulan, that Elon is only a problem if it's like a bias. No, 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 your home, the roof, the ceiling provides total shade or definitely more shade than sunlight. That has to be, do me the bias, to invalidate it. Ma bias, see, lost him, Iruma Mechamasai, af. The ilan of our Mishnah that passes the sukkah underneath it is only when, only if, tzilosi, miruba mechamos. Okay, so that's Ezra. Now the Gemara is going to challenge the logic of this din. It doesn't make sense. And now here, listen to these words. Frek Gemara, even in a case where chamosoi meruboi mitzilosi, even if the branches of the tree that's connected is sparse and it allows a lot more sunlight than shade, Still, how can Rava categorically say that the sukkah underneath it is kosher? Why would it be kosher? My have a farvas is good. Hakom etztaref, the foliage of the tree, sometimes will be needed to combine with the schach to create, to create under the sukkah more shade than sunlight. Hakom etztaref, schach pasul. Tzach basel is a tree foliage. With the tzach kosher, now I guess, guys, the, the part of the tzach, any tzach that's directly underneath a branch, I don't care that this branch is providing kamat, no shade, but the shade that it does provide renders the tzach underneath it non-existent. Because tzach, like we mentioned, even according to Basil, why are you placing the tzach? Even according to Basilo, it's placed for shade. You don't need shade over here. That's how this mission is linked to the previous sugya. And we're going to be consistent with that. That once you have invalid schach, something that's providing shade, but not halachically as a way that it's kosher schach. Whatever kosher schach is placed directly underneath it, halachically is viewed as it does not exist. Now, guys, listen. If the tree is so sparse, and on the other hand, the schach that you put in the sukkah, Shloima, is so gepakt, is so dense, that even after you discount all of the schach that's underneath the, the branches, even after you discount it, because halachically it's not existent, you will still have in the sukkah more shade than sunlight, then Rava makes sense. That we can accept. 
It makes sense. The problem is Rava didn't say that. Rava made a categorical statement. Rava said that as long as the branches don't give you more shade than sunlight, a sukkah that's built underneath it will be kosher. And that will include a scenario where if you discount, which you have to halachically discount, the schach that's under the leaves, then the schach in the sukkah is not enough. The only way you have more shade than sunlight in the sukkah is without discounting the schach that's under the foliage. But why? Why would you be allowed to do it? Really, that schach is not non-existent. So what is adding to the shade in the sukkah? What creates the shade? That which is closer to the sun. That's what, the non-kosher schach. So why are we allowed to combine and use schach pasal with schach kosher? Guys, we are, we are introducing big topics here in Sukh. It's good we have time. Guys, it's good. Yeah, it's clear. It's mamash. Okay. So, oh, answers the Gemara. Rava made a categorical statement, but it's not that categorical. When do we say that even if the density in the schach of the sukkah is such that when you discount the schach under the foliage, you won't have more shade than sunlight. Yet the sukkah is kosher. I, you're relying on branches that are connected to the tree. That's only if after you built your sukkah, you took those branches, we're learning Gemara Rashi, and you lowered it, and you mingled it in the schach. Still attached? Still attached. As long as the branches don't create the roiv of the schach. They are only creating the minority of the schach. Rashi adds the words, and they are not distinct because when they were lowered, they were mingled with the schach. Means when you go into the sukkah and you look up, you don't know whether you're looking at a kosher, a piece of schach, or whether what you're looking at is punta branch that's still connected to the tree. You don't see that from the sukkah. So we apply, says Rashi, the concept of bitul beroiv. And you know what bitul beroiv means? Is that now you are allowed to use the shade of the pasal schach to get to more shade than sunlight. Wow. What's the foliage? Foliage means the branches or the leaves. So Kalar Shalem, this is very important. This. Rabbi, living in Aloha, yes. the threshold over here, how does one decide? It seems like a very gray area. No, 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 it, it's not, it's, it, you can say it's a little bit complex. Why is it a great tzvika? So let's go, let me repeat. One second. Uh, some person could say, you know, the tree's not giving me so much shade, but you know, someone, else, someone else can say it's maybe a little different. Well, that's, 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 in other words, you're asking a technical question, tzvika, that sometimes the boundary, forget about all these cases. Sometimes, Bechlal, the sukkah is sparse, but it's not very sparse. And, and how do you actually determine more shade than sunlight? Is it more shade in the top? Is it more shade in the bottom? See, that, these are technical questions. Today, I think with technology, it's easy to measure that. They measure it. Okay, but over here, Step number one. It look, they lower it. You consider as if it's lowered? No, 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 Danny. You have to lower it. Okay, oh, okay, listen. The, the picture that Kaven gave, the, the tree, the branches of the tree are only a half a foot over the schach. It's right there. In Parsha Sashavu, it's not a mata, it's a shavit, it's connected to the tree. Guys, this is the, this is, this is the, the, the yesoid. Schach, that's kosher, that's directly under schach, that puzzle, is halachically non-existent. Remember that, that's a big rule. Huh? The kosher schach becomes non-existent. Here we're speaking about a case that you don't have in the sukkah after discounting the non-existent, you don't have enough schach to make more shade than sunlight. So what are you doing? You're taking the branches that you know are not kosher. For some reason you don't want to cut it off the tree, you want to leave it for after sukkah so you don't want to cut your tree. And you mingle it, this shechavotan, I'm reading inside Rashi, 14 lines from the top of the Amid. Hishpil, clear, hishpil enough of lamato. You, you, you bend it down, and it's not enough. Mi'uravin, you have to mingle it, you have to mix it, you have to intertwine it with the kosher schach. 
why do you have to mingle it? Zakt Rashi. Ve'ein niden ba'ayin. You can't, you can't look and say, ah, this is the branch that's connected to the tree. That's the kosher schach. If you see that, there's no bittel. You have to use the step of bittel. And it's not bittel that it's non-existent. Now, now that it's the, the, the minority is nullified in the majority, you are using the minority. You're using, you need it. That's the case. The schach kosher rabo olaf, u mevatlo, fwai zakrashi, because the middo airaisa, kol mili batl beruba. Amazing. Amazing. What about the No problem. The branches are mechubar lekarka. The branches are schach pasul. But since the branches were intermingled in the kasher schach, as long as there's roiv kasher schach, bittel beroiv, with the detail that it has to be in a way that ena nina ba'ayin, these nuances are very important. Now you count. Now you get to use all of the schach to create more shade and sunlight. Categorically, it's good in that case. Says the Gemara. The reason we're focusing on a tree and not, let's say, a balcony or something hanging over. Because, because, very good, Samach. Because a balcony cannot be bent down. Very good. In other words, let's go. What did we learn today? That if we built a sukkah underneath a balcony, and if you were to discount the schach that's under the balcony, which you have to, you would not have enough shade, more shade than sunlight, then the sukkah is not kosher. Very good. Bidiyuk. I, Ibi Shechavat and Maila Memronach. Wow, Vada, of course, this Bittel Beroiv. So the says, no, 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 no. Because it can get unentangled. It can go back, it can bounce back up. It can at least become uh, more separated where it will become Nirabayan. In other words, it's, very, it's a very limited case where it's okay. Mao the Tame and Nixar Hechon the Chavatan. To say that that's midrabana, not okay. Not every time you're going to bend it down and you're going to mingle it properly. Says the Gemara, well, but I don't need Rava, I don't need a Frek the Gemara, this concept, Honami Tanino, we learned in a Mishnah, we didn't learn it yet, it's going to be in Daf Yudalif. What's the Mishnah? You built a sukkah. Guys, you built a sukkah with kosher schach. And, 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 and now you want to make your sukkah even nicer. What did you do? Hidla allow. Hidla means you lift. So you have gef, you have grape vines. Now for those of us who are learning Perek we just learned about the grape vines, how they lay on the floor. In other words, you have certain branches, of, 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 whether it is from a grape, whether it is from a gourd. I'm a city boy, it must be that the, that the, the, veg, the vegetation that comes out of the gourd is lengthy, or from kisois, ivy. In other words, you have foliage that's now mechuber lakarka, and you throw it over, you lift it, and you throw it on top of the sukkah. The sikhich al gabam says the Mishnah psula, but adds the Mishnah, the im hoya sikhu chad b'mehem. If there is more valid schach than the grapevine, or if you later detached it, then the sukkah is kosher. Now we're going to learn about. The later detaching it, we're going to learn about tasli v'loim and ha'asli later. Let's just focus on the case where the Mishnah writes that if ha'yasichu chad b'mehem it's kosher. And here again, it's not so pasha to make that statement. Because that's the klal. Schach under invalid schach is non-existent halachically. Hey chidami, ilayim b'sholei chavatan. If the Mishnah is speaking not in a case where you mamish, where not only you lowered it. The word chavatan means to lower, but Rashi adds, you lowered it, and then you me'uravin, um, you are ma'ar of it. Hakam it's tarav schach, paslem schach kasha, like we explained above. Now, you can argue that the Mishnah is speaking about a scenario that there's so much kasha to schach that even after you discount the schach under the grapevine, you still have more shade than sunlight. The Mishnah would have to say it. The Mishnah doesn't give. The Mishnah makes a categorical statement. So it must be that the Mishnah is speaking about a case where you, where you, where you, where you, chavat, you chavatad it. El chavatan, and the Mishnah says it's okay. Shema meloi doloi gazrinan. So the Gemara gives a Gavaldika answer. That be medayik and digduk. That's something that we're not so great at yet. Hidla means, the word hidla means, if one lifted, that's a lotion that's used for a bit of If you did it, the Mishnah says it's kosher. You know how you would word this if you would have written this in a lachatchila dika way? You would say, hadoyla, hadoyla, but the Mishnah didn't use that expression. Mao the tema, only having the Mishnah, we would have thought, based on the digduk, that Rebbe says, only bit of it's okay. To, be, to, to use bitl beroiv in such a metziah, like people are wondering, and you need that schach, you need that schach. You're using it. 
Aval lechatchila loy. So that's why Rava wanted to make it clear that even lechatchila you can do it. I. Why did the Rebbe use the loshon with the other? The question has to be explained. Okay. Weiter. Next. What a daf. Thank you. What we're up to right now. Yeah. Is that if there's ever a tree called Lofuka, it's possible. It's only when the 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 branches are intermingled with your stuff and your stuff is more. Uh, no, I, I, my takeaway is the opposite. It's very common here in Los Angeles that, Barcha, you know, people who have uh, backyards, that there is some foliage that's not hanging over the main part of the yasukah, but it's on the edges. When you look up your schach, you, if you have a little bit of, of tree or of a plant that's mechubar lakarka, it doesn't automatically invalidate your sukkah. What you should do is, yeah, now here Tzvika said, how do, you, how do you do it? I don't know how you do it, but you have to uh, have that estimation. It the area It only invalidates the schach directly underneath it. It makes it non-existent. Now, if you have so much schach in your sukkah, make believe it's not there. You have so much schach in the other parts of the sukkah that even if that would not be there and there wouldn't be the tree, there would still be in the sukkah more shade and sunlight than your sukkah's kosher. Gavaldik. Okay, let's go weiter. Right it's getting a little bit late. Exactly. So tzamach, that's the word that if discount, discount the schach that's directly underneath it, it becomes non-existent. If you still have enough schach in your sukkah that is giving you more shade than sunlight, your sukkah is kosher. If you don't, then one solution will be to do this chavata. Put it in there. But I would just add something else that for the people now that use mats, putting a nice branch of a tree will not affect bitul, because Rashi added Rashi added that word. Your mavatul something when you, it's indiscernible. Once you can discern, like you have a mixture of kasher and treif, can't say it's always bottel. Take out the treif if you can see it. Okay, vaiter sukal gaba sukam. Uh, guys, don't, it's, sometimes we focus on sukkah al gaba sukkah. Sometimes we say sukkah tacha sukkah. It's the same thing. This is another din, my friends. Nothing to do with the first din of the Mishnah. The top sukkah schach is kosher. One would argue, you're kidding me? I have two layers of schach. What do I care? You know, we are, we are actually, aside of leaving a little area in our minig through which you can see the stars, al pi kabbalah, we have a lot of schach. What do you care? No, says the Mishnah, no. The fact that there's a double-layered schach invalidates the lower one. Sukkah b'sukkah says the Gemara, Tana Rabbanon. Where do we get that from? Pasik and Parshas Emoid. And guys, we're going to go back to we just, Eim la Masoides, Eim la Mikra, if you remember, that even though we read the word basukois in the plural, but the Torah writes it without any vavs, which can also, when we darshan, Torah Shabal it can be read as a singular expression. And that's the singular expression. One schach. Basuka is teishu, v'loi basuka shatak as asuka. Suka means schach, and only be sit under one layer of schach, not under a double layer of schach. V'loi basuka tach asu ilan, which is another din. That's another din. V'loi basuka b'teich habayis. Frek di gemara ader abo. Basuka is you're reading it basuka is double. Tarte mashma. I get it tach asu ilan. I get a tachas abayis, but the first din of the b'raisa, which is the second din of our Mishnah, what's wrong with the basukois? El Omer Rav Nachman by Yitzchak. No, no, no. Basukois ksiv. If you can read inside the Gemara, it's not written with, with there's no vav. Aim la and it's being maramis to this din. Okay, so now that we have it, it's a limit. It's as the Torah says, one, one layer of schach. So Rabbi Yirmiya says, let's start. Omer Rabbi Yirmiya, not so quick, my friends. Pe Omer, there are times that both of them will be kosher. Pomim, case number two, both are possible. Pomim, the opposite of our Mishnah, that the Tachtoina is going to be kosher, the Elyoina will be possible. This is the best one we'll see soon. And number four, number four is the case of our Mishnah, that the Tachtoina is possible and the Elyoina will be kosher. Guys, all of this is Beshitas Chachamim. Don't forget there is a Rabbi Yehuda that argues. We're going to get to that, the God willing, in the next year. Says the, explains the Gemara. Al pi say the Rishon Rishon Achran Achran. Pomim Sheshteim Kishayrois Hechidami Kegoin She Tachtoina Chamosa Meruba Mitzilasa. The bottom sukkah's sunlight is greater than the shade. 
Listen to his chap, Rabbi Yirmiya. So halachically, is that schach? No, it's not. If there would be nothing built overneath it, there's taka schach, but it's not enough. It's not creating more shade. So here again, what did Torah say? Sit under one layer of schach. Okay? The bottom schach was, is invalidated per se. Now, uh, guys, let's not forget that we learned in the first Mishnah, and we pass him not like Rabbi Yehuda, that schach cannot be lamay lama esramamo. So that you have to work that out. And al yoyna, the top schach is good. And what's that good? Silasa meruba mechamas. It creates more shade than sunlight. And the kaima el yoyna betoich esrim. And the schach of the top sukkah is not above 20 amis off the ground, off the bottom one. If that would have been that case, then again, it's not kosher schach for the bottom one. Gavaldik. So both, both if you enter the top or the bottom, in both cases, you're sitting under the same one layer of kosher schach. Case number two. How could anyone sit up? How could anyone sit up the top anyway? Who's that, Kavan? Oh, okay, okay, so you have to, you don't picture the little uh, mat that we buy, that Halavai was taka made, not uh, to, as a keli. We're speaking about the way our grandparents put uh, schach. It was, it was disconnected off the trees, but they put big, uh, they put big uh, pieces of, uh, of foliage. Huh? They put thick bamboo. And who's going in there? Someone that didn't eat for a month. I don't know, I'm saying it's just a, it's Shaykh, even today. And Rabbi, in this case, well, what's the idea of the schach that's on the lower level? Are we considering that it doesn't exist? Non-existent. And not only non-existent, it doesn't ruin, see, it doesn't ruin you can argue, what's underneath it. It's adding, what do I care if it's if providing more schach? It's not pasal schach. It's non-existent schach. It's kosher schach that's not enough. Let's keep on going, let's keep on going. Number two. We'll stop, maybe we'll go number two, we'll leave number three, but number three is the best, but let's go to number two. Number two, write four lines from the bottom. Poem him that both will be possible. Hey, Chidami, Kigoin, Ditarvayu. Both are bona fide good schach. They are providing a lot of shade. Silosan, Meruba, Mechamosan. Now, that is the din of our Mishnah, as we learned in the Braisa, Basukois, Eim Lamusoiris, Keilu Basukas. Like Lush and Yachid. So you're in the bottom. I know that the schach underneath you is giving you more shade. So is the one from the top. And, so one second, so why is the El Yoyin A technical thing, that's why it's not a stira to the Mishnah. That the top schach is Lamaila Me'esrem Amo, not from the ground, I don't care about the ground. It's Lamaila Me'esrem Amo from the floor of the top one. The Kaimelon El Yoyinu. Again, from the floor of the top one. You're good? Push it. So Yataka have, we have to emphasize, guys, that if the one on the top would have sparse schach, uh, then you can't say that the guy in the bottom is sitting under a double layer of schach. There was a chiddush to Rabbi Yirmiya. Words, on one hand, we're not validating the top schach. Even for the top sukkah, because it's above 20 amas from the top sukkah. But it's enough schach to invalidate the bottom sukkah. Because at the end of the day, we do call it schach. It's not non-existent schach. Non-existent schach is when you don't have enough of it. Enough schach that creates more tzel than, than, than chama is schach. But since it's lamay lamay it can't function to kasher the top sukkah. I think we should stop over here. Of the top, from the floor of the top, Danny, from the floor of the top. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very, very important. Very important. Yeah. Okay. We'll stop over here. So we're up to number three and number four of Rabbi Yirmiya to be continued.